Welcome back to Let's Explore Mongolia. In this video, we are going to learn all about Mongolian culture. What are the people like? How do they live? What kinds of things do they enjoy doing? But first, I think it's time we thought a little about the flag of Mongolia. As you can see in your map, the flag is just waiting to be coloured in. You'll have an opportunity to do that at the end of this video, but first we need to learn what the flag looks like and what it means. And I've got my flag here. The flag of Mongolia has three equal bands of colour. Red on the sides with blue in the middle. The symbol on the flag is yellow and is called the Soyombo. The symbol was part of an old language in Mongolia that is no longer used. But the colours represent the country's values. Red symbolises progress, blue represents loyalty, and yellow, it stands for prosperity. The red colour also reflects the time that Mongolia was a communist country. Mongolians fly their flag all over the country, so isn't it helpful to know what the colours represent and what this little symbol is? Today, Batar is taking us out of the city to see how people live in the vast plains. As we look out of the window of the car, again we see the amazing scenery stretching out for miles and miles. But after a while, just on the horizon, you can see a, a, a large cloud of dust. And as we get closer, we keep watching it, and soon it becomes clear that a huge cloud of dust is being kicked off the ground by an enormous herd of horses. You've never seen so many horses in one place before. Batar tells us that these are wild horses, and large herds of them can be seen as they venture over the plains in search of food. Horses have actually been a crucial part of Mongolian culture for centuries and they're still an, a very important part of the nation's identity today. Not only are horses used for transport, but they're also considered symbols of power and strength. They were essential to the success of Genghis Khan as he conquered the world on horseback but they remain important to Mongolians today, especially in sport. In Mongolia, you can find horses being used in racing to see who can go the fastest. You can see archery on horseback farrowing arrows while riding a horse, or even in the game of polo, where you use a long stick to hit a ball. In honor of this important relationship between humans and horses, a festival is held each year to celebrate it. The Nadam festival celebrates skills of horsemanship through a number of different competitions, including wrestling and long distance riding and hurdles. While all Mongolians love horses, they are especially important to a group of people who Batar is taking us to meet. These people are nomads. And that means they're people who travel around, moving from place to place. They don't live in a house like you and me. They live in all kinds of places and they rely on horses to help them move around. The reason they move so often is that they keep large numbers of livestock like sheep and all of these animals need food. So when they run out of food in a particular area where the grass has all been eaten, nomads pack up everything they own and head somewhere new where there's fresh grass for all the animals. Eventually, we arrive at the place where the nomads are currently living and we get out of the car and take a look around. In front of us are a bunch of big, white, round tents. And when you ask Patar what these round tents are, he tells you that they're called gurs. And a gur is a kind of tent that can be put up, taken down, and transported elsewhere to be set up all over again. And they're particularly found in the country of Mongolia. Instead of living in a house, the nomads live in these gurs because they need a home that can travel with them. 
skirts are made with a wooden frame and then they're covered with lots of felt or wool cloth. All of the furniture inside the gur is designed to fold away, making it easy to pack up and travel with. Do you think you'd enjoy living in a gur? Imagine constantly packing and unpacking all the time. It must get really tiring. A woman comes out of one of the gurus in front of us. She strides towards us and says something that you don't understand. Thankfully, Batar translates. The woman has said, how are you in Mongolian? And how do you say that? Well, it's Sambanu. As you can see and hear, the Mongolian language is very different to English. In fact, they use an entirely different alphabet. Let me show you how to say how are you in Mongolian using our letters. Okay, that's a bit better, but it's a still a bit strange, but let's learn how to say it together. And then that means we can greet everybody that we meet in the Mongolian language. Let me pronounce it for you slowly. Samban Nu. Can you repeat that after me? After three, one, two, three. Sam ban nu. I think you're getting the hang of it, but let's try one more time. After three, one, two, three. Sam ban nu. The woman is soon joined by her husband. They are both wearing bright clothing with fur lining to keep them warm. Batar says that they're wearing deals. Deals are traditional jackets that Mongolian people wear with long sleeves, a high neckline and embroidered designs. The man is also wearing a very strange looking hat called a tortsog hat. He catches you looking at it and offers to let you try it on. When you do, you discover that it is incredibly comfortable and pretty warm. Maybe you'll get one for yourself at some point in your journey. It's getting late and we've been invited into the Gur to stay the night. Inside, the walls are covered with blankets and furs and it is surprisingly warm. So now it's time to go to sleep before we find out what our next adventure will bring. The nomadic way of life is very different to what you and I are used to each day. These people move regularly around the vast plains of Mongolia to ensure that their animals have enough food. Often the nomads find themselves in the middle of nowhere, far from any kind of civilization. While you and I are used to staying in just one place, we too often wander around, only in a much different way. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 speaks of how each of us are like sheep, going astray and turning to our own way. We all wander away from God when we do things that displease Him and when we follow people or things that aren't Him. But even when we wander, God is faithful to us. The Lord is the good shepherd who looks after His sheep. In Matthew chapter 18, Jesus speaks about a shepherd who leaves 99 of his flock in search of the one sheep who has gone astray, going after it and bringing it back to safety. Just like that shepherd, Jesus takes care of those who love him, even though we tend to wander away. Before we finish, let's pray to God. Father, thank you that you are the good shepherd who takes care of his sheep. Help us not to wander away from you. Please reveal the truth of your son to the nomads in Mongolia so that they might become part of your flock and know your care for them. In Jesus' name, amen. That's the end of our second session. Wow, we're already halfway through our journey. Now it's time to do some stickers and the color in the flag on our maps. In a moment, the instructions will come up on the screen, so don't forget to press pause and complete all the steps. See you next time!